Are you tired of playing boring old Tetris? Well, lucky for you, we're working on a Tetris spin-off called Pictris that updates this dusty classic and takes it to a whole new level. The basic premise of the game is that you take different colored tetrominoes and arrange them into a pixel art picture. Pretty neat, huh? Our team of expert developers are working day and night to deliver you a high quality, fun experience that you'll never forget. Except you, you're fired. You can rest assured that development is going along as planned and we expect a soft release sometime in the first quarter. Pictress coming soon. So the first thing I've been messing around with is the size of the puzzles. I started out prototyping the game using 8x8 pixel images. This resulted in puzzles that had 16 pieces. While this size works pretty well and shows the game has potential, I felt like the puzzles were too short and easy to complete. It's also difficult to create interesting images at 8x8 pixels because there just isn't enough detail to work with. So I'm scaling the pixel art up to 16x16 16 16, which will make the puzzles have 64 pieces. Okay, let's fire up Acebrite and lay down some pixels. I'm gonna start by drawing a bird. At first I thought it'd be some kind of duck, but then it turned out to be blue, so I made him into a blue jay. Then I was getting hungry, so I drew a slice of pizza. Notice that I was careful to include as much pepperonis as possible, because pepperoni is my favorite. Now I'm making a smiley face because I know emojis are a really popular form of self-expression these days. Next, I'm making a cat. This is one of my favorites because I think it filled the 16 by 16 space in an interesting way. Also, there's enough detail that it's memorable, but not so much detail that you lose the strong shapes. I feel similarly about this next one, which is a picture of a fish in a fish bowl. The challenge for creating these pixel art puzzles is that I can't have large areas of one color because that causes too many of the tetrominoes to be a solid color, which makes putting together the puzzle pretty boring. Here's a couple failed attempts. For some reason, I thought a picture of toast would be cool, but it turned out to be a boring bloody mess. And then I tried to make a tasty cupcake, but it ended up looking like a colorful pile of garbage. I did a couple of others as well, but I think my favorite of them all is this alien. I think it's because the silhouette and colors turned out really nicely. Now back to Unity. The first thing I want to do is improve the movement of the pieces. Right now, the movement is too slow and clunky. So I'm changing it to where if you hold a directional key for a moment, the piece will ramp up to a faster speed. Okay, I think that fixed it. Now let's bring one of our 16x16 pixel art images into Unity by cutting it up into a bunch of different tetrominoes that fit together. Here, I'm reconstructing a drawing that I made of a princess. Cool. Now onto some gameplay. So far, the game has two different playing modes. The first is puzzle mode. In puzzle mode, the player is simply trying to recreate the image on the right side of the screen by stacking different tetrominoes one at a time. There isn't going to be a time limit or score or anything. I want this mode to be a chill and relaxing experience, much like putting together a traditional puzzle. I'm thinking that the music and sound effects will support this as well whenever I get around to them. The second play mode is called challenge mode. In challenge mode, the player is still trying to recreate a pixel art image by stacking tetrominoes, but there will be a time limit because the tetrominoes will be falling. At first, I tried using all the different tetromino shapes, but I realized it was too difficult to find the correct position, rotation, and fit of each piece in time. So I changed it to where the player is only given square blocks. This way, the blocks will always fit together and the player will only have to worry about the placement and rotation of their piece. At first, I wasn't sure if it would be fun to place only square blocks, but after a bit of testing, it's actually quite satisfying because you still get the thrill of seeing a cool pixel art image magically come together before your eyes. Okay, so after messing around with challenge mode for a while, I realized there's a couple of problems. The first is that a lot of times you end up having a very tall column of stacked blocks next to a very short column. This ends up blocking the piece movement, and it's hard to scan vertically that much to find the correct piece placement. I fix this by coding it so that the tallest column of the filled blocks will never be more than two blocks higher than the lowest column. 
The next problem is that challenge mode puzzles are still a little too hard to make it through without messing up at all. So I made it to where the player starts out with one life and gets another life every time they correctly fill out a horizontal line of blocks. I think it makes it a little more fair and gives the player a nice reward for making progress in the puzzle. Maybe the biggest thing I've been having trouble with is that it takes forever to convert a pixel art image into a puzzle in Unity. So far, I've been going through each Tetromino piece and changing the individual blocks one by one to match the 16 by 16 pixel art image. Because that's a total of 256 blocks, the whole process ends up taking about an hour per puzzle. I'm almost a little embarrassed to admit that it took me so long, but I eventually realized there's a much better way. I figured out that I could code a tool to automate the whole process. The way the tool works is that it samples the color of each pixel in my PNG image and converts the Tetromino blocks in Unity to those colors. Now I can just drag in a 16x16 PNG, click one button, and the image is created automatically. The last thing I worked on is the visuals and background for the game. I think I've settled on a good size and position for the puzzle and preview. I'm thinking for the background, it makes sense to keep it simple, but a solid color was feeling too empty and plain. So I experimented with having some random tetrominoes scattered around. I even made it to where they rotate randomly every few seconds, which I think is pretty cool. But I could never decide what color to make the background or the tetrominoes because it always ended up feeling like it didn't all tie together. Then I came up with the solution. I decided to make the background a solid black and make the background tetrominoes the same color as one of the blocks in the player's piece. Then, when the player gets a new piece, the background tetrominoes will change color to match the new piece. I think it's a dynamic solution that makes both the color scheme and player experience feel more coherent. So that's where I'm at with my pictures puzzle game. See you in the next one. I can't be fired. I won't be fired.